aorist verb forms usually express perfective aspect and refer to past events, similar to a preterite. Ancient Greek grammar had the aorist form, and the grammars of other Indo-European languages and languages influenced by the Indo-European grammatical tradition, such as Sanskrit, Armenian, the South Slavic languages, and Georgian also have forms referred to as aorist. The word comes from ancient Greek aoristos, indefinite, as the aorist was the unmarked form of the verb, and thus did not have the implications of the imperfective aspect, which referred to an ongoing or repeated situation, or the perfect, which referred to a situation with a continuing relevance. Instead it described an action, pure and simple, because the aorist was the unmarked aspect in ancient Greek. The term is sometimes applied to unmarked verb forms in other languages, such as the habitual aspect in Turkish. Indo-European languages, Proto-Indo-European in Proto-Indo-European, the aorist appears to have originated as a series of verb forms expressing manner of action. Proto-Indo-European had a three-way aspectual opposition, traditionally called present aorist, and perfect, which are thought to have been, respectively imperfective, perfective, and stative aspects. By the time of classical Greek, this system the system was maintained largely in independent instances of the non-indicative moods and in the non-finite forms, but in the indicative and independent clauses with the subjunctive and optative, the aspects took on temporal significance. In this manner, the aorist was often used as an unmarked past tense, and the perfect came to develop a resultative use, which is why the term perfect is used for this meaning in modern languages. Other Indo-European languages lost the aorist entirely. In the development of Latin, for example, the aorist merged with the perfect. The preterites of the Romance languages, which are sometimes called aorist, are an independent development. Greek in the ancient Greek, the indicative aorist is one of the two main forms used in telling a story. It is used for undivided events, such as the individual steps in a continuous process. It is also used for events that took place before the story itself. The aorist indicative is also used to express things that happen in general without asserting a time. It can also be used of present and future events. The aorist also has several specialized senses meaning present action. Non-indicative forms of the aorist are usually purely aspectual, with certain exceptions including indirect speech construction and the use of optative as part of the sequence of tenses independent clauses. There are aorist infinitives and imperatives that do not imply temporality at all. For example, the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6 verse 11 uses the aorist imperative in Give us this day our daily bread, in contrast to the analogous passage in Luke chapter 11 verse 3, which uses the imperfective aspect implied repetition, with, give us day by day our daily bread. An example of how the aorist tense contrasts with the imperfect in describing the past occurs in Xenophon's Anabasis, when the Persian aristocrat Orontes is executed, and those who had been previously in the habit of bowing to him, bow to him even then, quote, here the imperfect refers to a past habitual or repeated act, and the aorist to a single one. There is disagreement as to which functions of the Greek aorist are inherent within it. Some of the disagreement applies to the history of the development of the various functions and forms. Most grammarians differentiate the aorist indicative from the non-indicative aorists. Many authors hold that the aorist tends to be about the past because it is perfective, and perfectives tend to describe completed actions, others that the aorist indicative and to some extent the participle is essentially a mixture of past tense and perfective aspect. 
hermeneutic implications, because the aorist was not maintained in either Latin of the Germanic languages. There have long been difficulties in translating the Greek New Testament into Western languages. The aorist has often been interpreted as making a strong statement about the aspect or even the time of an event, when, in fact, due to its being the unmarked form of the Greek verb, such implications are often left to context. Thus, within New Testament hermeneutics, it is considered an exegetical fallacy to attach undue significance to uses of the aorist. Although one may draw specific implications from an author's use of the imperfective or perfect, no such conclusions can, in general, be drawn from the use of the aorist, which may refer to an action, without specifying whether the action is unique, repeated, ingressive, instantaneous, past, or accomplished. Quote, in particular, the aorist does not imply it once for all action, as it has commonly been misinterpreted, although it frequently refers to a simple, non-repeated action. Sanskrit Although quite common in older Sanskrit, the aorist is comparatively infrequent in much of classical Sanskrit, occurring, for example, 66 times in the first book of the Ramayana, 8 times in the Hitopadesa, 6 times in the Bhagavad Gita, and six times in the story of Vakantala in the Mahabharata. In the later language, the aorist indicative had the value of a preterite, while in the older language it was closer in sense to the perfect. The aorist was also used with the ancient injunctive mood, particularly in prohibitions. Slavic languages The Indo-European aorist was inherited by the Slavic languages in general. It is obsolete, or virtually so, in most of them, but does function in South Slavic languages like Bulgarian and Macedonian. Until recently, in Serbian, Croatian and Bosnian, the aorist had mostly been used in literary language and legal writing. The predominantly young users of the modern means of communication have found advantages of using the rarely spoken verb forms like aorist and imperfect as they require fewer characters than compound and verbs, thus bringing them back to popular use. In Bulgarian, which has produced a new regular formation, the aorist is used in indirect and presumptive quotations. Bulgarian has separate inflections for aorist and general perfective. The aorist may be used with the imperfective, producing a compound perfective imperfective aspect. The aorist in Macedonian is called past definite complete tense and it refers to a completed action in the past tense. It most often corresponds to the simple past tense in English, I read the book, one wrote the letter, I ate my supper, etc. In contemporary standard Macedonian, the aorist is formed almost exclusively from perfective verbs. The formation of the aorist for most verbs is not complex, but there are numerous small subcategories that must be learned. While all verbs in the aorist take the same endings, there are complexities in the aorist stem vowel and possible consonant alternations. All verbs take the following endings in the aorist. Morphology in the Indo-European languages Greek and Sanskrit, the aorist stem is marked by several morphological devices. Three aorist morphological devices stand out as most common, South Caucasian languages. In Georgian and Svan, the aorist marks perfective aspect. In the indicative, it marks completed events. In other moods it marks events yet to be completed. In Mingralian and Laz, the aorist is basically a past tense and can be combined with both perfective and imperfective aspects as well as imperative and subjunctive moods. Northeast Caucasian languages in Kinlug, the aorist is a perfective aspect and the two terms are often used interchangeably. In Udi, the aorist is an imperfective aspect that is usually a past tense, but can also replace the present tense. Turkish in Turkish the aorist is a habitual aspect. Quenya. In J.R. Tolkien's constructed language Quenya, the aorist is a nomic tense a simple present that expresses general facts a simple present actions. 